Classical School friends and family. Thank you for joining us for another awesome annual celebration. This year, Poe's Black History theme is Black Chicago History. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Our students and staff have worked very hard, and we want to showcase our learning of Black Chicago history. I got my city doing front flips. In the middle class, when every father made a rapper jump shatter. I guess south. that's why they call it where I stay. Clean up the streets so my daughter can have somewhere to play. Chancellor Jonathan Bennett was born. April 16th, 1993. But we professionally know him as Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper released his debut mixtape from day in 2012, but he didn't get recognition until 2015 after making his second mixtape album. His third mixtape coloring book released in 2016 earned him three Grammy Awards, including Best Rap Album. Johnson Publishing Company was established in November 1942 by African-American businessman John H. Johnson. Headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, Johnson Publishing Company is known for its flagship publications, Ebony Magazine and Jet Magazine. Here to showcase their exploration of the Jet Magazine covers, second grade. If you feel insignificant, you better think again Better wake up because you're part of something way bigger You're part of something way bigger Not just a speck in the universe Not just some words in the Bible verse You are the living word ah, You're part of something way bigger Bigger than you, bigger than we Bigger than the picture they framed us to see But now we see it it ain't no secret, no Understand the truth about that question in your soul Look up, don't look down, then watch the answers unfold Life is your birthright, they hit that in the fine print uh. Take the pen and rewrite it Step out your estimate Step in your essence and know that you're excellent, right? Spirit is teaching, no, I'm not just preaching I'm taking my own advice Let mama let you know 
mama still trying I can't get no days off I don't get no days off Truly I'm feeling it I had to say that thing twice Trying to be a good wife Still really hard, I can't lie But I promised you I would fight So I fight If you're feeling frustrated and You're sinking, I'm jumping in Forgiveness is key because we're fighting something way bigger You never lose, we are winners I'll be the roots, you be the tree That's on the fruit that was given to me Legacy uh, We're part of something way bigger
It's time for the pork today. 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 It's time for the pork today.
places with no carpet on the floor bare. But all the time, I've been climbing on and reaching, landing, and turning corners, and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn your back. Don't you sit down on the steps. Don't you fall now for I'm still going, honey. I'm still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stairs. This is Kingston Muhammad, and I just read Mother's His Son by Lampson Hughes. Bye. Gwendolyn Brooks, born in 1917, was an American poet, author, and teacher. Gwendolyn Brooks is most known for being the first African-American poet to win the Pulitzer Prize in 1950, and in 1968, she was named the Poet Laureate of Illinois. Gwendolyn Brooks sadly died in 2000 due to cancer. Richard Wright, born in 1908, was an American author of novels, short stories, poems, and nonfiction. Richard Wright is best known for being among the first African-American writers to, pro to protest white treatment of blacks, notably in his novel, Native Son in 1940. Richard Wright sadly died in 1960. Charles White, born in 1918, was an American artist known for his chronicling of African-American related subjects and paintings, drawings, lithographs, and murals. White's best known work, is the contribution of the Negro to American de democracy, a mural at Hampton University. Charles White sadly William died Edward in Scott, born in 1884, was an African American artist. William Scott is most known for his paintings Night Turtle Fishing in Haiti, Haitian Market, and Douglas appealing to President Lincoln. William Scott sadly died May 16, 1964. On, a, on the other hand, L.D. Courtois, born in 1961, um, 1916, was an African-American artist and printmaker. His work typically features elongated nude figures in intimate settings, influenced by both traditional African art and European civilians. L.D. Courtois, unfortunately, died November 26th. Archibald John Mosley Jr., born in 1891, was an American visual artist. He studied painting at the School of the Art of Institute of Chicago during the 1950s. Graduating in 1918, Arch Archibald John Mosley during painted during the Harlem Renaissance. Archibald John Mosley sadly died. Chicago.gov, Syncopated Times, Biography.com, Renalian.org, PBS.org. What exactly is the Chicago Black Renaissance? The Chicago Black Renaissance was a movement on the south side of Chicago that took place from the 1930s to the 1950s. The Chicago Black Renaissance was also called the Chicago Literary Black Renaissance, and it consisted of people who did art, music, writing, dance, and more. There are tons of amazing things that came out of the Chicago Black Renaissance, but today we are focusing on music. The main music that came out of the Chicago Black Renaissance was jazz, gospel, and blues. Some music artists and or groups in the Chicago Black Renaissance were the Creole Jazz Band, Louis Armstrong, Mahalo Jackson, King Oliver, and Thomas Dorsey. The Creole Jazz Band of King Oliver was from 1917 to 1974. It consisted of seven people, Baby Duds, Johnny Duds, Louis Armstrong, Harney Dutry, Lil Hardy Armstrong, Bill Johnson, and of course, King Oliver, the band's leader. When Louise Armstrong joined the band, it got more popular than it already was, and the band had a huge influence on jazz. Soon though, soon though Louise's wife, Lil Hardy Armstrong, convinced Louise to leave the band in order to afford being held back from King Oliver. 
After leaving the band, Lewis created a really popular group called Hot Five, which consisted of the following people: Little Harden Armstrong, Johnny, Edward Oy, and Johnny Dutz. Mahalia Jackson and Thomas Lewis were both big influences on gospel music in the Chicago Black Renaissance. Mahalia Jackson was born in 1911 and died in 1972. She was known as the Queen of Gospel. Mahalia was raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, and came to Chicago in 1927. She aims to become a nurse, but later decides to become a member of the Johnson Gospel Singers. She was most responsible for the popularity of gospel music, and she sold tons of records, including Thomas Dorsey. Thomas was known as the father of gospel music. He was born in 1899 and died in 1993. He was raised in Villa Rica, Georgia, and came to Chicago in 1916. Thomas co-founded the National Convention of Gospel Choirs and Courses in 1933. In 1939, he partnered with Mahalia Jackson and they both guided the golden age of gospel music. The Chicago Black Renaissance was filled with so many amazing music artists and genres, so we are so happy we got to inform you about some of them. Thank you all so much for being an amazing audience. This is Leah, JL, Dory, Cadence, and Diana signing out. Hope, Hope you enjoyed our presentation. presentation. Chicago Black Renaissance Revival slides by Malia Hall, Sydney Wade, Leah Hayes, and Macari Lynn Payne. Audio by Sydney and Malia. Wait, we want to thank you for watching our presentation. A quote always seems to regroup and introduce an idea. A quote that stood out to us is, "Do not desire to fit in; desire to oblige yourselves to lead." Wendling Brook. This presentation is about the revival of the Chicago Renaissance, which lasted from the 1930s to the 1950s. You will learn about the movement, the impact, and the remembrance. Enjoy our presentation. The Chicago Black Renaissance is the name given to the surge of artistic expression, community organizing, and social activity in Chicago's African American community during the 1930s through the 1950s. The Chicago Black Renaissance was influenced by two major social and economic conditions: the Great Migration and the Great Depression. Dressed down in jeans, a black hoodie, and crisp sneakers, the six-foot-eight Chicago-based mixed media artist stands in front of his mural at Eastern Market on a busy Saturday afternoon, prepping one of the most anticipated creations of a new street festival, the Flyboy, painted by Hebrew Brainy. The Black Chicago Renaissance resembles the cultural explosion of literature and art. This led to the Black community in Chicago coming together. The Chicago Defender, the nation's most influential Black weekly newspaper, recognized the significance of the Chicago Black Renaissance and encouraged Southern Blacks to relocate to Chicago. The impact on Chicago that the Renaissance had is honestly amazing. The eruption of Black artists, sculptors, writers, poets, dancers, etc., influenced the new entertainers of every generation to come after. As an example, you may hear the background music. Well, this is "Let's Groove" by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Our group hand selected this because Earth, Wind, and Fire is a group that originates from Chicago, and there could be a possibility that the movement could have inspired the group. But since the movement wasn't exactly well known in Chicago, it is only a possibility. We remember the Black Chicago Renaissance as the coming together of the Black community in Chicago. Although Harlem had a big impact on America, the Chicago one was influential as well. But the Chicago Renaissance did not have as many white dependents and allies. In what became the signature style of the Chicago Black Renaissance, authors and scholars, including Horace Caton, St. Clair Drake, Richard Wright, Zora Neale Hurston. Langston Hughes and Gwendolyn Brooks presented and defended their views before an audience of critical community members and activists. 
If you want to learn more about the Chicago Black Renaissance, you can search on your Google web browser or look at the Chicago Tribune. You can also check out the Black Chicago Renaissance by Darlene Clark Hine, John McCluskey, and Marshonda A. Smith. The Chicago Black Renaissance is a name given to the surge of artistic expression community organizing and social activity in Chicago's African-American community during the 1930s <clears throat> through the 1950s and which figure prominently in the years leading to the modern civil rights movement of the 60s. Through the numerous years of depression, World War II, and a second great migration, and a second great migration of African Americans to an almost completely segregated Chicago of the 1940s and 1950s, this multidisciplinary collaboration of artists, writers, scholars, and activists promoted the study of black history, art, and politics to form social protests against racism and discrimination. During this dynamic era, Chicago was one of, if not the center of, urban African American art, blues and jazz, dance, theater, poetry and fiction, and social and social and sociological study. The Chicago Black Renaissance literary movement emerged from broad social and cultural changes that accompanied the unprecedented expansion of African American community on the Chicago's on Chicago's South Side, beginning with the Great Migration of nineteen sixteen to nineteen eighteen and continuing with successive migrations throughout the 1950s that brought Blacks from deep south to the urban north. The, incep the inception of the Chicago Black Renaissance literary movement coincides with the onset of the Great Depression of 1929 and the resulting collapse of the Black Metropolis. The center of the city's African-American political political, social, economic, and cultural life that developed in the 1910s around 35th and State Street. Many blacks migrating to Chicago found that the North could be as hostile as the South, especially when it came to issues such as membership and trade unions, access to employment, and lending, and, and lending, insurance and housing um, restrictions that confined the black population to portions of the West Side and to the Black Belt. The overcrowded chain of neighborhoods in the city south side their response was was one of demonstrated urgency to improve conditions for their own and future generations by the african americans are fortunate enough to purchase homes often settled in the southern portions of the black belt or near the lake as they found their choices limited by discriminatory practices including housing covenants read dealing tactics and violent protests in nearby white neighborhoods, widespread un unemployment, inequity housing options, poverty, crime, and other crowded conditions contributed to a palpable sense of frustration with the denial of the citizenship rights throughout the African American community in Chicago during the 1940s and 1950s. This year for our Black History Project, we partnered with the Pullman National Monument. We took a trip over to the museum and learned about how great displays are created. We were then charged with the task of making our own. We researched people and events that were connected to Pullman and Chicago. Our projects are currently on display at the Pullman National Monument for all visitors to enjoy. Hi, I'm Amir Moultrie, and I worked on the AFL Randolph part. Hello, my name is Christian Evans, and I worked on the AFL CIO part. Hello, I'm Peyton Brown. I worked on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s connection to the labor movement. Hi, my name is Zoe, and I work on the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Floaters. 
We did our project on the Pullman labor movement. We chose to do the labor movement because it relates back to Chicago. George Pullman gave a lot of job opportunities to black people during the Great Migration when people came up north to look for better jobs. But African Americans were treated unfairly in the workplace. So A. Philip Randolph created the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters to help fight the unfair treatment. He became the vice president of the American Federation of Labor and Congress of Industrial Organizations to fight for higher wages and fair working conditions. He worked with Martin Luther King Jr. to organize the March on Washington to not only fight for desegregation, but for equal pay. The labor movement had a huge impact on how we live and work today. Hello, my name is Kayla McDaniel. My name is Brianna White. My name is Jaden Curry. And my name is Shayla McIntosh. We learned how the Chicago Defender newspaper and the Harlem Renaissance helped to start the Great Migration. The Great Migration was one of the largest movements of people in U.S. history. Millions of African Americans moved from the South to the North for better opportunities. Midwestern cities, especially Chicago, were shaped by this historic event that lasted for decades. There was crowded housing, limited education, violence, and discrimination. We chose this project because we were interested in this large movement, how it happened, and the effect it had on Chicago. Hello, my name is Jeremiah Brown. I'm Malcolm Mulvin. And I'm Anthony Pence. Our project is about A. Philip Randolph. A. Philip Randolph was a revolutionary person that changed the course of the civil rights movement. He helped with the labor movement by helping the BSEP or the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters get better working conditions and wages. Randolph helped organize one of the biggest marches ever, the March on Washington, with over 250,000 people attending. Many people only think about Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech when they think of the march, but it could have never happened without organizing the people to be there to hear it, which is what A. Philip Randolph did. Hi, my name is Ariel Eldridge. I'm Madison Mason. I'm Lanaya Epps. I'm Makaya Parnell. And we chose to do our project on the Chicago Defender. We wanted to make our project look as realistic as possible, so we decided that making it look like an actual newspaper will give us that added realism. To get this look, we cut newsprint to the size of regular printer paper and printed out text and glued it to big sheets of newsprint. This helped us get the old newspaper look. Our newspaper consists of topics on the Chicago Defender, the Great Migration, the Pullman Porters, and the Mississippi Flood, and how they're all connected. We chose to do our project on the Chicago Defender because this all gives us black history connection to Chicago that our group was eager to learn about. Something in our city, specifically our community, that did so much good, yet rarely gets talked about. Ultimately, we chose the Chicago Defender because in the midst of Black History Month, the Chicago Defender and other topics get lost in the shadow of other well-known Black history topics and figures. We have really enjoyed working with park rangers from the Pullman National Monument. In fact, Poe Classical was named Pullman Monument's Partner of the Year. We are incredibly proud to have our museum exhibits on display for everyone to enjoy, and hopefully visitors will learn something new about Black history, the connections to Pullman, and how Black Chicagoans help shape the country.
And that is the end of our presentation. Thank you again, Poe family and friends for joining us for another awesome, amazing annual Black History Celebration. We hope you enjoyed Black Chicago history, and we hope to see you again next year. Thank you.